Today I have some relaxed neat sewing to share with you for the go-to dress. You can also make skirts. I've got four items to share all from the same pattern. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And today I have some relaxed neat sewing for you. I say relaxed because really it's really relaxing to sew this pattern. It's brand new from Pattern Emporium. It's a brand new release and it's called the go-to dress and skirt. It's designed for neat fabrics. And you can see in the line out here that there are a lot of options as usual. I love that about Pattern Emporium. There's always so many options for you to mix and match. So you can get a lot of variety out of just one pattern. But the basis is that it's a fitted bodice, has a seam at the waist, and then it has an A-line skirt. And then you have a lot of variations to that. So for the necklines, you can mix and match different depths of the scoop neckline you can have the high one that's a crew so that's high in the back and the front but still big enough for you to just put your head through you don't need any closure and then in the front and the back you have a high a mid and a low scoop at the back as well so you can you know mix and match <laughs> for the dress i've made i decided to use the mid scoop here on the front and the low scoop on the back so you can do whatever you want. I think that's really fun. And there's all the neckband pieces in the correct length for the combination that you choose. So that's cool. For the sleeves, there are sleeveless. One that's cut away slightly narrower here. It's not like a racer back, but it does show a little bit more of your shoulder. And then there's a wide sleeveless. That's the one I would choose if I made sleeveless. And then for sleeves, you have a short sleeve and a cap sleeve. That is in a different pattern piece and it's a little looser here. It's not loose, but it's not really slim. And then the longer sleeve that includes the full length, the three quarters, those are more slim fitting there on your arm. So all those options, you can make it for winter, for summer, whatever you want. In the pattern, you'll find the page in a section that says get creative and it tells you a list of all the patterns you can use to match the sleeves with this bodice. So there's a whole bunch of patterns there that have different types of sleeves, flared sleeves, bishop sleeves, longer sleeves, different type, where those sleeves are gonna fit this bodice and this armhole without you needing to change anything. That can take this go-to dress pattern even further if you start adding different types of sleeves from other pattern emporium patterns that are here because they're gonna match exactly and it's easy, easy. Just get that sleeve, pop it on this one and it'll be good. And the skirt length can be above the knee, below the knee and a longer version. So to make this pattern not just a dress and also be skirts, you can take those skirt pieces and make them into skirts. And there are two types of waistbands provided in the pattern. One is a yoga waistband, which is just taller. You fold it in half. It's a little wider, you don't have an elastic in there or anything like that. Or you can do a narrower one that actually has an elastic inside, would be about one and a half inches. So you can choose either or. I've chosen the yoga waistbands, I'm a real fan of those, I think they're so comfortable. And the fact that you don't need to put elastic in there is a win for me. Because I tend to save elastic only for the woven projects that need it. So for needs, I'll definitely go for the yoga waistband. Now these skirt pieces are not the same pattern piece for the front and the back. They have a different waist angle and they have a different length in the front and the back so you're really assured to get a really good fit. The back skirt is slightly longer and that accounts for the volume that we have at the back with our bottoms. So that is really nice. This isn't the only pattern release that Pattern Emporium is having in these few days. So apart from the go-to dress which is a brand new pattern, they have updated an older pattern called Wonderlust. So they've improved the sizing, you know, just tweaked the pattern and improved it to include up to size 30. And that one is also on sale for these next few days. These both patterns, the go-to dress and skirt and the Wanderlust, they're both 25% off on the site. You don't see the discount, but you see it at checkout. I thought I'd mention that. My affiliate link is down below in the description box if you'd like to use it. I make a small commission from there. And I do mention that all the time because I have to. Very appreciative if you use my link because it doesn't cost you any extra and that's the way you can support the work that I do here on YouTube. The sale goes through Friday night Australian. So sort of Friday morning here in this area of the world. So just make sure you check. I'll leave all the information below. Need neat fabric for this one. And it is a fitted bodice. There is a recommendation there in the pattern of at least 25% stretch horizontal and at least 15% vertical. So you can use a whole bunch of different fabrics for this. You definitely need the stretch to give and to have that stretch vertically because the bodice is fitted. You know, the sleeves are fitted. You need that comfort here on the armhole. 
and you need the bodice to stretch over your curves also. So definitely make sure you need fabric stretches in every single direction. So you can see three little groups of types of knits here on my graphic. I just separated them into types. So ones are a little heavier, a little more structured I'd say, like cotton jersey, ponty, scuba, Liverpool, some knit crepes are like that. So that is one option. It would be fine, just remember that those types of fabrics tend to feel a little more fitted against your body than other ones that are lighter. Then you have the lighter ones like double brush poly, single brush poly, ITY, rayon spandex, bamboo spandex, etc. And then other types of knits you could use are uh, rib knits, stretch lace, stretch velvet. Make sure your stretch velvet has vertical give because some of them don't. Same as stretch lace. Athletic knits could be in this mix of different types of knits. Sweater knits could be really good as well. Just make sure that your fabrics have elastane, spandex, or lycra in the blend so that these fabrics can stretch and recover, especially for your neckband pieces if you're gonna use the sleeveless version. And well, all of them have a neckband piece to finish the neckline. So that fabric for sure has to have at least 5% spandex in there for it to lie close to your body and not end up being stretched out over time and the form. I've made three skirts and one dress to show you today and they're all athletic knits. It just turned out that way. It's just a really favorite type of fabric that I have because it's light to medium weight. The prints are amazing, they're super soft, they feel amazing on, and I'm always looking for them when I'm purchasing fabric. The sizing goes from four to 30 Australian, and the largest size has up to a 54 and three quarter inch bust, a hip of 58 and three quarters. So you choose your size based on your high bust because that ensures you get a good shoulder and neckline fit, and then below for the waist, the hips, you can blend and combine sizes if your body doesn't really fall into one straight size, you know? So on the bodice, you see two cut lines there. One is a regular length, and then you have a longer line there for a longer bodice, tall. So that's the one I've chosen for myself. So that's really nice. And then the skirts are A-lined. You know, if you need to blend from one waist to a different bust, do that on your bodice. And just make sure that the waist size that you have on your bodice is the one that's gonna match your skirt. So you can also multi-size at the hips and just blend to a larger size if you need to but it is an A-line skirt. You do have a bit of space in there. I think if you were up to one size larger, you would get away with not blending out for your hip if you needed to. I've made one dress for myself and I've chosen a straight size 18 according to my measurements. I use the below the knee length skirt, but it actually is above my knee. I'm just a little taller that way, so that's fine. <laughs> and I've made three skirts. I've made one for myself. I use the same size. I've used my yoga waistband. Now for my mom, I made two skirts. Why didn't I make her a dress? <laughs> she doesn't really tolerate knits here on her upper body. She's more of a woven person, cotton, viscose. She doesn't really like the feel of lycra, lustain on her skin here, on her chest and stuff. So she barely ever wears any knits but she can take it down in her lower body. So yeah, she touched the fabrics and she thought, yeah, the skirts are fine. <laughs> so I've made her one a little shorter than the other. It was all about the amount of fabric available. And for her, I have a size 12 hip, blended out to a size 16 waist. And then I have the size 16 yoga waistband on the top, so it's comfortable for her. This is a really relaxing project. If you are newer to sewing, you're gonna be able to do this. So I've separated the sewing into two segments. I filmed myself sewing the skirt in the exact same steps I do it. It's very, very simple. It's a very short little clip. And yeah, let's hop into that because once you see how to sew the skirt, I won't repeat it for the dress, then I'll just show you the bodice separately. I'm just sharing quickly how I whipped up these skirts together. It's just a front and a back, both on the fold. They are different pattern pieces and you have either a yoga waistband or one that's slightly narrower where you can put an elastic inside. The back skirt is a little longer than the front as you can see. The seam allowance for this pattern is a quarter of an inch so you can sew it all on the serger if you want to or you can use the sewing machine. I'm just going to go ahead and use the serger for this. It's going to take no time at all. I'm using the above the knee length. It doesn't take up too much fabric. So relaxing. Still at the serger, I'm just cleaning up the bottom edges so I can fold this up and use a twin needle to hem. I'm just making sure all this is neat. I do like to clean the bottom edges because it just looks neater but you don't really need to if you don't really want to you can just fold it up and hem it's not going to unravel but 
I like everything to look super neat. Before I use a twin needle to hem, I'm just gonna hand baste it quickly just to keep it even and so it doesn't move. When you twin needle, you have the fold underneath and you really can't control it that well with pins. I always trust the process better if I just give it a quick hand baste. I take huge stitches, it's nothing fancy, nothing that's gonna take over one or two minutes to do. Twin needling is really, really easy. There's really no science for it. All you do is thread them both together like you would if you were just using one single thread there's nothing different I usually lengthen my stitch length to 3.5 I think that works really really well I use polyester thread then I swap out my jersey needle for a twin needle there this is a needle that's number 90 both of them are for jersey and the space between them says 3.0 which I think is one that works really well for this weight and then you have both threads coming out there. You've threaded them all the same through the same route that you would a single thread and you just thread one of them through one needle and the other one through the other. Your bobbin is all the same as always and that is it. Then you're just ready to sew your straight stitch using the twin needle. Super easy. It's a stitch that allows stretch. At the back it forms a type of little zigzag stitch. It's a type of stitch that won't pop and it'll look nice like a fake cover stitch. Now that I have the sides and the hem done, I'm gonna go ahead and put together this yoga waistband. It's just one long piece. There is a seam and this is a seam that's gonna be at the center back. I'm sewing it on the sewing machine and I'm using a quarter of an inch. I'm using a narrow zigzag for this. This is a stitch that will allow stretch also but look like a straight stitch. Once I'm done with this seam, I can just open this up and fold it onto each other lengthwise. Then I'll have a round waistband. I'm gonna divide this waistband into four. And it's the same process you would do with a neckband, only it's much smaller. This is just a band that's gonna be at the waist. This is gonna be smaller than your waist. It's gonna be smaller than the skirt that you're sewing it onto. And this will allow this yoga waistband to keep your skirt up in place without needing the elastic. And then I'll be able to put this onto the skirt. Here we have a different fabric, but it's the same pattern. I've got my marks on the skirt, center front and center back. I'm going to match those to the yoga waistband. The little seam from the yoga waistband is gonna match the center back of the skirt. And then the other references are the side seams. And then with the serger, I'll be stretching the waistband slightly to meet the length of the waist underneath and just sew it on the round. That is how the go-to skirt is made. It's so, so nice pretty addictive actually I ended up making three <laughs> I was planning to only make one but that's how it goes when you enjoy something and it's so easy this is a skirt that you saw me sewing in parts of the steps this is an athletic knit that is more of a medium weight it's more structured it's a little heavier it's not as drapey as the other ones I'm going to show you and I had only a small amount left over from making the flossum dress also from Pattern Emporium I love the colors I love the print it's a really nice fabric. It feels like a really heavy cotton spandex. That's how it feels, more, a little bit more structured. But this is a polyester bandex type blend, athletic knit. And I have my yoga waistband there. I love yoga waistbands. Oh my gosh, it feels like you have nothing there. The elastane in the fabric keeps the skirt up. There's 10% elastane in here and it's super nice. So the skirt here is the below the knee length. But in, on me, it's sort of mid-knee for the skirt. And I've made a lookbook with all the skirts, actually. I've combined the one I made for myself and the ones I made for my mum. Here are the skirts I made my mum. This is a black and white athletic knit. It was left over from a top I made at the beginning of the year, I believe. This is the below the knee length that I made for her. Super comfy yoga waistband. Very, very nice. And so soft on the skin, it feels amazing. And then this one, you're gonna see it again. I have already made garments out of this fabric. When I found it in a shop, I bought the whole amount they had left on the boat, which was more than four yards. That's why I've made a lot of garments with this fabric. I just love it so much. So this for my mum is two inches shorter than the below the knee length and about two inches longer than the above the knee. It's basically what I had left of the fabric. It was a last minute make. After I made the dress, I thought, hey, there's still enough for a skirt. So I made one for my mum. Now I'll show you the inside of these. It's so easy, both skirt pieces on the fold. I mean, what's not easier than sewing side seams, a hem and a waistband, it's just so easy. Look, straight on the serger, twin needle hem, just so nice. So let's have a look at all the skirts. <laughs> 
One of the options of the go-to dress is to just make a skirt. You can add either a yoga waistband or one with an elastic. This one has a yoga waistband. This is an athletic knit, super comfy for my mom, really nice and stretchy, comfy there at the abdomen, really nice and floaty. You can see the wind pushing the skirt everywhere. Love this skirt for her, black and white. She's chosen green to contrast the black and the white skirt. I think it looks really nice. And this is the below the knee length. Size 12 hips and blend the 12. 16 waist. I made myself a go-to skirt also. This is an athletic knit that is a little bit more structured. It's really nice. I have the above the knee length here also with a yoga waistband. Super comfortable. I love that print and I can just pair it with black. I have a matching handbag so I'm really happy about that. And I know this is a skirt I'm really gonna enjoy wearing. So, so comfortable. These skirts are just the best. So easy to sew, only two pattern pieces, side seams and a waistband, what could be easier? Nothing really, just so, so nice to make. At least for this length, it doesn't take up that much fabric and this is a size 18. I ended up being excited about this skirt and made a third one when I realized after making my go-to dress that I had enough to make another skirt for my mum. She likes happy prints like this just like I do. So this one is a little shorter than the below the knee length just to maximize the use of the fabric. Otherwise it's the same size 12 hips blended to a size 16 with a yoga waistband. Super comfy. I know she's going to get a lot of wear out of this one because so many colors here there's a lot of styling options for your shoes and the tops that you wear with it Okay, now second sewing segment is about the bodice. Now, I've told you already that I chose the mid scoop with the low back. You know, you can do it the other way, it doesn't really matter. I've made a small change to this bodice, just because this athletic knee is not the heaviest, and why not? <laughs> I've cut a second layer for the back, so I can line the bodice partially only at the back. That means I can enclose shoulder seams and I can enclose side seams. So it's not that it's super hard. I mean, it's really, really easy to do, but it does change the original construction of the dress where if you just had a single layer, you know, you can sew your shoulders, your neck band, put your sleeves in on the flat, then sew the seam of the sleeve and the side seam. That's a typical way you would put this together. But because I'm doing all this lining business, I get a bodice on the round and then I sew on the skirt on the round and I have my sleeves on the round. So let's see how to do it easy peasy. You'll see the neck band, how I'm enclosing these seams. You'll see it's so, so easy. You wanna do it with all your bodices because it's very, very easy. So let's see. These are the bodice pieces. I have a back and a front, both on the fold, very simple. There are a lot of neckline options and depths for you to choose from. And I have short sleeves here. There are also other sleeve options. And the long piece you see there is the neckband. I've cut a second piece because I'm gonna make the back double. So I'm gonna change the sewing a tiny little bit. I want to enclose the shoulder seam between the back bodice because I'm doing it double. So this is my main back bodice. It's got the deeper neckline. And here is my lining. It's the same, it's exactly the same. I cut them from the same piece. So these two are right sides together right here. 
but we have to sandwich in between the front. My front has the higher neckline here. So I'm just gonna take this aside. This is right side with that one, so I'm just keeping that together right there. And now I'm gonna put the front right on top here. I line those shoulder seams and then bring back this back piece that I'd had on top before. So if I take the front away, these two are right sides together, the lining and the main back. And then we have the front on top of the back right sides together here. So that is the order. It looks really weird, but it's gonna work. We just have to align the shoulder seams here and sew them. So I have a back, I have a front, and I have a back. Those are the three layers. And I'm not doing it on the serger, I'm just doing it on the sewing machine. This is gonna be enclosed anyway. So this lining piece is gonna go towards the back, right there. Those are the two back pieces, now wrong sides together. Here is my front in a single layer, and you can see that encloses the shoulder seams right there. And because they're enclosed, they're directed to the back where they're supposed to be. So that's how you get a really neat shoulder seam right there. That's how you do the shoulders. I've just flipped it to how we just seen it originally. We have the same three layers here. I'm just gonna flip this this way so that you can actually see what I'm gonna do. <laughs> So keeping the layers the same, in the same order that we sewed the shoulders, nothing has changed. We have three layers on the side seams now. So all we have to do is the exact same thing. Just pin the three layers together on both sides, sew them, and then when we flip it again, we're gonna have shoulder seams enclosed and side seams enclosed. Okay, so the shoulder seams are sewn and then the side seams are sewn. You could actually just do them all in one go. I just wanted to do the flip there so you could see what was going on. So it's just three layers, back main fabric, the front, and then the lining of the back. And just flip it. And then we have the back, which has the deeper neckline for me. And inside we have the enclosed seams. And on the sides, we have enclosed seams going towards the back as well. So this is how it looks on the inside. On the back, we have two layers. The lining and the main, enclosed shoulder seams and enclosed side seams. Here we have a neckband similar to what we did with the yoga waistband. We are just sewing the short little seam there. I'm using the sewing machine. I'm opening that seam, folding it lengthwise, and then we have a round band. I'm gonna divide this in four, just mark those with pins, and then we can apply this to the neckline. This is always gonna be shorter than the neckline. Okay, after enclosing the side seams and the shoulder seams, I'm gonna sew on the neckband. I've put a pin here at the center front. This is my higher neckline on my version. And then a pin at the center back here that has the two layers. This is the lower neckline for me. Those are just the options I've chosen. So that's divided in half. Now when I put these pins together here on top, align everything, I can get the other quarter. Now your other quarter is not gonna match the shoulder seams ever. This is the other quarter here and because my neckline is deeper at the back. It goes off towards the back right here. So every neckline shape will have its own quarter points, but it will never match the shoulder seams. That's one thing for sure. So the same as you do a yoga waistband or anything you divide in four, it's super easy. I have my pins here. I had already divided my neckband into four. I have the center back seam of the neckband that I'm gonna match to the center back of my neckline there. This is my center front here. I'm gonna match these together here right sides together, each of these pins. And then as I serge these, I'm gonna be stretching the neckband to fit the neckline underneath that is larger. Once you get the hang of these and you start doing a lot of these, this can be super fast, super easy, very relaxing to just whip on a neckband. And it's the same technique for an armhole, same thing. After putting the neckband on, we just stretch it slightly to match the neckline underneath and we do this by quarters. Just do it carefully. Here I'm stretching the neckband to meet the neckline underneath. On the back section, I have four layers of fabric, so I'm just keeping them all together.
Here I'm sewing the little seam of the sleeve. If you're doing a long sleeve, then this seam will be longer, of course. Mine is just little because it's a short sleeve. After that's done, I'm gonna fold it up and then do my twin needle hem. I am sewing my sleeves in on the round because of the way I have put this bodice together, so now they are ready. Now that the neckband is on, we can sew the sleeves. Now, if you weren't lining or doing any of this, you could have sewn the sleeves in on the flat and then sewed the side seams. But because of this partial lining method, you do need the closed armhole like you have it here. And I had already done my sleeves. These are ready. I've done the little seam. I've already done the twin needle hem. So all I need to do is find the sleeve that has the single notch here. Have your sleeves right sides out and then you just slide it in. And that means the sleeve is right sides together with the bodice. And then you just match the notches, sew it on the round. Remember, knit sleeves should fit exactly. You're not easing in or doing anything like that. You're not doing anything similar like you do with a woven. So you'd have a notch that matches the shoulder, the double notch on the back and the single notch on the front. I'll just search that super easy. After sewing both sleeves, then it's really easy. You've already seen how I did the skirt. It's just that for the dress you don't add on the waistband of course and then you just put your bodice and your skirt together. These two pieces are going to match so you don't need to stretch or gather anything, it's super easy. Okay, here is my dress. This is my athletic knee. It's got all the colors you could ever imagine. There is my neckband. One way I'm gonna remember that I've chosen the higher neckline on the front is that my skirt has a sneaky back seam here because I wanted to make the most out of my fabric and you know, there was enough fabric for a skirt for my mom. You know, I have a seam at the center back skirt which is not the original plan, but even Kate, the designer, she does that on her dresses and she mentions it in her videos. She's like, just add your seam allowance, go for it. So I always do. So I'm always gonna know this is the back because I have a center back seam on the skirt and that's gonna help me remember that my neckline at the back is lower. So you saw that when I was dividing my neckband into quarters, one of the references was coming over towards the back. It's the opposite if you have a lower neckline on the front and a higher one on the back. Never assume the shoulder seams are a reference point there. My short little sleeves, these aren't the cap sleeves, these are the short sleeves. And then my A-line skirt. As I mentioned, I do the below the knee length and that is actually above my knee. Let me show you inside. It's getting really windy right now. I hope you can't hear the wind. <laughs> there are the seams enclosed, super neat. Then I have two layers on the back and it's just caught in the sleeve normal. And then you have this enclosed side seam that is so nice. It feels so nice on, so soft. It's very clean looking inside. But it's not just about looking pretty. It feels really comfortable because you don't have the seams rubbing against you there. So I always love doing that. And then the skirt is just sewn on there, on the round. Let's see this one on. Very simple styling, just shoes. This is my go-to dress from Pattern Emporium. Mine is a size 18. I use the below the knee length skirt, but mine is actually just above my knee, just because I'm a little taller. I used a really colorful, lightweight athletic knit to make my go-to dress. I love the shape of the skirt and the amount of volume it has. For the bodice, I used the tall length option, so it's a little longer. There is a shorter cut line for a regular length bodice. I have the short sleeves, many other sleeve options available, of course. And for the neckline, I have a mid scoop front and a low scoop back. But you'll see the details up closer. Here you can see that the bodice actually hits my natural waist, so it's a perfect fit for me. Front and back, I do have an extra center back seam on the skirt just to maximize my fabric. Here is my neckline. I really like that mid scoop and the low scoop at the back. I thought I'd do something different. I really, really enjoy that the fit of the sleeve is very good you know you can make this for winter if you use the heavier fabric but I'm really happy with this one I did double up the back here so I have a partially lined bodice I'm really happy with how that feels I like doing that when I use lighter weight materials and it's very easy to sew inside very happy with this dress <laughs> colorful makes me really happy
Don't forget to check out the go-to dress and the Wanderlust dress. Those are the both dresses that are on sale through Friday morning in this area of the world, Friday night in Aussie time. That's all from me today. I'll disappear for a few days because I have a lot of sewing to do for Patreon and it's, get, it's really hard to sew. I've got my mum here and I just, I really don't want to sew. I just want to hang around with her, you know, but I've still got things to do. So I'll see you again in a few days. Bye.